everyone, welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are covering a very important subject, though obviously it doesn't look quite as sexy as some of the other tutorials we've got, but it's equally as important because you'll be using text and text on a path in various layouts, and it really brings your layouts to life if you know the right tools to use. So there's a lot of really versatile ways that you can use topography in your layouts by using just a couple of quick tools. So I wanna go over all of the capabilities this week and kind of give you a masterclass on typing along a path in Illustrator. So first things first, what typically happens, most people, kind of warp their text by going like this. So if I say type on a path, but not really, because it's gonna look like it's on a path, but it's not at all. So usually what people do is they will select their text, then they'll come up here and go effect warp, and then they have to kind of guess which one is appropriate for what they need. And then they'll come in here, you have to hit preview, you have to adjust the arc that you want if you're using an arc, and then you're gonna hit okay, and then you're like, but I wanted to say typing on a path. So then you have to come in here and kind of find the invisible text. You have to hit T on your keyboard, type out typing, and then close it up. But wait, maybe the arc isn't as tall as I want it to be, so now I have to go back and go effect, warp, arc, and then it's telling me I need to apply a new effect and it's gonna kind of add on to my old effect, so then I've gotta do a bunch of math. It's horrible. So let's totally skip that and have way more flexibility by typing along a path and making it exactly what we want. So let me show you what's going on here because a lot of it kind of looks the same. Right here, you can see my blue lines that show up. So that's our path. Right here, all I have is a circle. So I'm gonna show you how to type along a closed path in Illustrator. I'll also show you how to create that same arc that we just did, only a really, really quick way to do that using the shape tool actually. So we'll do this and then we'll come and put it inside of a circle this time. This one, you can see the blue is our path, so it's right on top of it. This is the baseline of the text. This one is the A sender, so you can see the path begins um, where the A sender hits, so the top of this T. Right here is the D sender, so you can see the bottom of the P right here, so that's why there's that extra space between the path and the text. And then this one is centered, and then this one is flipped, so it's hard to read. And then you've got a bunch of different kind of warpage, weird, funky, I probably would never use these kinds of effects, but I'm gonna show you how to do them in case you do wanna do them. Okay, so we're gonna start off easy and then we're gonna build right on top of it. So first things first, you need to create a path. You can create a path using your pencil tool, your pen tool, or your shape tool. Those are the most popular methods for creating a path. So the keyboard shortcut for the pencil tool is just N on your keyboard, or you can grab it right over here, and you can just draw a path. Then you're going to hit T on your keyboard for your text tool. You're just going to click on the path, and then you can begin typing along the path. And just like that. So with the pen tool, let me grab it over here, it's also P on your keyboard, so I can draw a path however I want, and then hit T on your keyboard, and then begin typing along the path. So that's another way, and then the, the final way is the shape, so I just have the ellipse tool right here, so if I hold Shift and Alt at the same time, I can I can drag out a evenly proportioned circle from the center, and then I can just hit T once again, but this time it doesn't kind of give me that line to let me know where I need to touch the path. So if I come over here and drag this out, I can choose type on a path tool, and then it will force it to begin typing along the path. So I can just touch the edge of the circle and begin typing around the circle. So that's how to do the basics. So. These are three different ways to just put text on a path. Okay, so now we wanna start getting a little more creative. I'm gonna reduce the amount of text right here. I'm gonna zoom in on it to show you a bunch of other cool things. So I'm just gonna have this say, um, typing along the path. All right, so as you can see, I've got a path that extends further than the, the typography, but maybe I want it centered. So I could center it by just hitting my centered um, align icon right there, so that's really nice, but maybe I need it to be further over here for my layout or wherever this is being placed. So if I hit A on my keyboard for my direct select tool up here, I can actually click 
on these vertical lines. So you've got a left vertical line, you have a center one, and you have a right one. And all you have to do is click and drag and it'll drag your text along it. So if you have too much text um, on either side, you can drag it out that way. Um, if you begin typing on your path in the middle and you run out of room, this is your way to kind of adjust where this text is falling. You can also, once you have your text like this, say I need a little bit of extra tracking set on it. I'm using Railway Regular for all these examples. It's a free font and I will leave a link on screen and in the video description if you want to use the same. So I can come over here with it selected and I can just adjust my tracking, which is the space between all of my characters. So just like that, I can expand it a little further and have it fit along that path a little bit better. Okay, another kind of quick little uh, tool that you can use is going back to the direct select tool. If I click on the center vertical line and just drag it down, I can flip my text like that. So that's a really quick way to flip your text. Okay, so I promised uh, a nifty little trick for typing along an arc. So this is what it is. You're just gonna grab your ellipse tool and either make it a circle or you can just drag out a regular ellipse. And then all you have to do is hit your A key on your keyboard for your direct select tool, select just one of the points, and then hit delete or backspace and delete that point. And then now you've got a perfect arc to type along. And it's based on whatever ellipse that you drew. So that's a really quick way to have an arc and you know it's perfect on both sides because whenever you're drawing an arc freehand, you can have one side that's really nicely curved and then the other one definitely doesn't match up. So it's a nice little trick. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some of the, the more fun things. So I'm going to grab, I'm actually gonna grab this example and I'm gonna flip it back up so we can follow along. So let me flip this back up. All right, so we've got our type along the path. And next, I'm going to grab, I'm gonna come up here and go type, type on a path, type on a path option. So this is where all the, the cool stuff is for using uh, whenever you're putting text along a custom path. So these are the defaults. Uh, the default effect is rainbow. Um, you can also flip text by going just make sure preview is checked, so whatever you do, you can get a preview of it. So this is another way you can flip your text um, outside of just flipping that center vertical line. Okay, so it begins by aligning to the baseline. So it'll always default like this. But as you saw over here, I had a bunch of different alignments. So you can see if I hit A center, it's gonna drop it along here. And D is gonna pop it up, so it's hitting the D senders center. So that's how you create all of this typography over here. Right here where the effect is, let me change this back to baseline, where the effect is is all those other kind of warpage things. So the skew, that's kind of nice. Um, 3D ribbon, it gets kind of funky, and then it gets really crazy. Stair stepping, it depends on what your path looks like. If your path is really funky, this is gonna probably become unreadable. Um, so just keep that in mind, make sure everything's readable. It's super important. All right, so if I hit gravity, then it gets really crazy. So just be aware of your readability and kind of going for whatever you're looking for. So the really awesome thing about typing along a path is you get to define how your text goes because it's no longer automated by the warp tool. And you can come in, unlike trying to find where the invisible text is, you can just hit T on your keyboard and go, um, go right into the live text and edit it. And if you wanna change anything, you just come up here and go type, type on a path, type on a path option, and you have easy access to changing whatever you need. There's no like adding one effect onto the other effect where things can get really confusing fast. So it's a huge benefit to begin this practice and kind of get away from adding that, um, that warp to your text. So live text is always so much cleaner and nicer and the files are much better that way too. Okay, so the last thing is over here, we've got this closed path. So we're just gonna grab a circle, draw it out, and we can grab our type along a path tool over here. I'm just gonna click and I'm going to, oh, it's because it's center aligned, that's why I jumped over there. Okay, so if I'm left aligned, it'll start right where I set it. Okay, so I'm gonna just type out typing along a closed path in Illustrator. Okay, so it doesn't go all the way around, which you can just come over here to your character palette and kind of up the size of your text, or you can up the size of your tracking as well to kind of fill it all in. So that is a nice way to just 
type along any path, you can make a star, but things are gonna look kind of funky around the really extreme angles. Um, so circle is pretty nice. Most people can read it. It's really good for logos as well if you're um, creating a circular logo. Okay, so when you wanna set type inside of a closed path like this, I'm just gonna copy this and bring it over here. And all you have to do is come back to our fancy little tool, type, type on a path, type on a path options, and just hit preview and change align to path from baseline to a center. That's a quick way to just knock it inside of wherever you want it. And as you can see, there's less space in here, so I need to reduce, I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna reduce the size of the text using my character palette. And there we go. So it's really that easy. This is such cake to put together really quickly and you have so many more editing capabilities. It just becomes so much more flexible on a layout than it is if you're warping your text. So from now on, type on a path in Illustrator because you know exactly how to do it. And I actually even made a free cheat sheet on how to do everything I just talked about. So if you ever need to reference this in the future and you don't want to refer back to the video, you can pick up this free Illustrator PDF cheat sheet over on my blog. I'll leave a link on screen and in the video description. So this is my gift to you this week. If you run into any issues at all, this kind of covers all of the bases that we discussed. Okay, so that is typing on a path in Illustrator, all the different capabilities that you can use and how powerful it really is for your layouts moving forward. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.